Hello there and welcome to this video series on the 2024 Employer Set Project. Um, my students have asked me if I can go through a model solution for the Task 4A and I thought why not do the 2024 one to show students exactly what you need to do in Task 4A because it is quite a complicated task this one. Uh, it's the most number of marks and you have to do that over four hours. So it says here there's some instructions. The instructions must be completed under supervised conditions. You're not permitted access to the internet during this task. And yet a couple of files during this task. You get a CSV data file and you get a Python file. So this is your CSV file. It has the date, car model, new and used cars, value and the salesperson. It has two months worth of data in it. And you've got to manipulate that and find patterns and trends. Uh, in order to be successful in this task. There's a set task brief. It, it stems on from task three. The scene developer has coded a solution and your manager has presented it to Versaire Cars. Since then, the car company has requested some additional functionality to be added to further develop the solution. It tells you how to save it, it tells you what you need to do. And this here on page four is probably the most important part. This is what you're gonna have opening your exam um, or your control time throughout the whole thing. So Vasair Cars has provided the new system requirements and these are that the existing code provided should or does allow the user to see the total sales income from different car models over time. So that's what's already been provided. The solution must also identify trends and patterns over time for new and used car sales and different sales people. The solution must be, be secure and Versaire Cars has also provided user requirements for the solution and these are that it must be easy to use, uh, you need to display the information in a meaningful way and make use of appropriate textual, numerical and graphical outputs in a way that would be relevant to the end user. And you've got a note there that says the data shows the sales records for the last two months. Now for us, that's the bottom of the page, we're going to keep that, we're going to keep referring to it all the way through. Here is the code that we've been provided, and this is working code. So if we hit the uh, compile button there, or the run button, we've got a menu option that pops up. I type in total sales, um, press number one. It says choice accepted, prints out total sales, and then we get a submenu. So it says please select an option, um, one, all sales by model, and two, custom selection. So let's go all sales by model. And you can see there, I've been presented or given the date, the car model, and the sales, I think that is. Although that really should be formatted to two decimal places with some currency. Uh, yeah, it should, a symbol at the start of it. Uh, wonderful. And it looks like it stopped there as well. So let me run that again just to check that second menu option. Put in number one, custom selection. Uh, which model would you like? Give me the compass. And it looks like it says there the total value sales for your selection is 274,795 something. Uh, I think it's pounds. It could be any money. I don't know. Um, date, car model, new and used value, and then a salesperson involved in there. And you can see this first column here is the index as well. So me knowing pandas and data frames, it will add a, an index on there as well. That's not done by the user, I don't think. So let's have a quick skim through the code in this first video, and then in the second one, we'll start adding some functionality. So import pandas as PD, standard panda import. We've got a function, main menu, no parameters are being passed in there, and we've got a flag. The flag is true. Now here in the while loop, this will keep you in the while loop until the choice that you provided is a valid choice. So we've got print statements in here, which is says for say car sales, and then it gives you one option. We'll probably expand this later on to put more options in there, but the choice is what the user types in, and we bring that in as a string. We try and convert it to an integer, and if it does let you do that, it'll say choice accepted, and it'll set the flag to false to break out the loop. If it does not let you convert it to an integer, it'll say, sorry, you did not enter a valid option and you'll get sent back to the start of the loop again when this finishes. 
If all successful, you'll return the choice and the choice will get sent back. Currently, the, cho the only choice you can have is one currently. So it sends that back to wherever this function is called. Down here, we've got a total menu. And this function, again, has a flag. It has a, a menu. And here's our submenu. We've got all sales by model and a custom selection. The user types in the choice. We do exactly the same thing. So we've got some repeated code here where you'll type an integer. If it's if it's a, val a valid integer, it will say choice accepted and set the flag to false and return it. Convert total menu choice. Now, this one takes in one parameter, which is the total menu choice. It, inside that, it says if the total menu choice is one, then you, your total choice is gonna be set to a string, which is all else, it will be set to model. And that's to allow the user to select all the vehicles or enter a specific model. And again, it returns that choice number. This one down here, get total data. Um, you pass in the total choice. So the total choice is what we just set above really. So you got all or model. If the choice was all, you're going to create a new data frame. And I recommend you do that every single time. You never you never change the original data because that's a very bad move. So extract new data frame here, and it says df.groupby. Now the group by function allows you to take multiple columns and merge them together. So here we've got the date and the car model. Date and car model. If we bring up our spreadsheet, date and car model it will hide these these ones here and that's what your data frame will look like at that stage now we've got a comma here and then it says sort equals true so we're going to sort by the date it seems but you've got value dot sum outside the brackets means every time you group a car model I think it looks like it's going to group the car model. Let's take that for example here. So group the car model. So let's say we selected all the compasses. We're going to add all those up together. So in essence, what it does is it will sum up all these numbers here and output them to the screen. So there we are. That's the number that it will provide in the end. And what we're doing is we're getting, well, the exam board is, is providing that for us, which is useful. Now I say to my students, you can, everything you need will be pretty much in here if you can understand it. So a big battle is just understanding what they're asking. So group by date and car model, sort the data and give me the sum of the value column. Total equals DF value dot sum. And then print the total value of the sales for your selection is bracket bracket. And these blue brackets here are a string format. And you put full stop format. And then the variable you want to display inside those brackets is total. And if you look at the data, you can see, can't you? The total value of the sales for your selection is 274,795. And that's what this is doing over here. So... If it's not all and you go for a specific model like I did, I went for compass in mine. Um, it says here, while true, flag equals true, while flag. And then it will go through each one, one to five, and it will output all of them. Now, this is a strongly recommended option here. You don't want the user typing anything in. If you can keep the user just by pressing numbers, that's going to be much better for the user in terms of their experience and and it's also better for um, data entry and validity it's much easier to validate a number than it is a string so it says enter your selection check if it's an integer sorry or yes choice accepted and you'll notice on this line 93 here it casts the integer cho the choice to an integer and then stores it back in the variable so this is the conversion from a string to an integer 96, it creates a list, and the list contains all the models from the CSV file. Custom choice. 
when the user says, I want choice uh, three like I did, I'll type in number three, but in actual fact, where is compass? Compass is at position zero, no. Is it at position one? No. Is it at position two? Yes, it is. So because it's at position two, and I've typed in three, I need to minus one to the choice so that I can actually locate it. And what this is doing is this is saying extract df.lock. So go and locate it. Now there are two versions of lock. Location is providing a, a string label. Where there's iLock, you'll see iLock sometimes. iLock is an index location, so you have to give it a number and it'll go and locate it. In this instance, we're giving a string value. So df.lock square brackets. So what do you want to find? I want to find in the data frame, in the car model column, I would like to find anything that equals or is equal to the customer, the custom choice. So that for me, that was custom choice, when I put it in models there, it would return compass. So go into the models array, at the position of choice, I typed in three, we minus one to it because it's at position two. Custom choice has compass in it. It will check and find anything that matches compass. After that, it will say total equals extract, that's the data frame I've just created, value.sum. So that will output the sum value all of the compasses in my list. Then we print that out again without any currency or to two decimal places, which is very naughty, very naughty indeed. Okay, here you've got return extract. So that will send back the data frame extract for us. And then we get to line 106. So line 106 is main menu choice. Main menu choice. This is the first line that we actually run in the code. Main menu choice calls the function main menu. We scroll all the way up. There's main menu. And then you've got return choice. So whatever the user types in, you can only type in one at the minute. So that'll return choice one. I'll expand that later so you've got more choices, but total menu choice, total. So it runs the total menu, it then converts total menu choice for you, and then it prints out get total data, total choice. So it runs all in functions I've just been through. Other than that, if you put in another option, it says this section is under construction. So that's what our code is doing first. There's no code comments or annotations on the code, and that's for a reason. Stage one of doing well in, the t in task 4a is to understand what's been given to you. In the next video, we'll move on to the next section. So we will start to identify trends and pattern over time, trends and patterns over time for new and used car sales. So join me in the next one and we'll get stuck into the code straight away.